We're standing outside Mizrahi Bookstore, which is like the Mecca, pardon the analogy, of Jewish bookstores. But what's so exciting about Mizrahi is not just the books, but the people, the culture all around it. We're here with my dearest friend, Yisrael Mizrahi, and one of my oldest friends in the whole wide world, Shimon Steinmetz. He literally, just walking by, this is Mizrahi Bookstore, these are the people around it. Brace yourselves, we're about to go in one of the most incredible bookstores in the entire world. Brace yourself. Our series, Show and Tell, will take you inside some of the great libraries, both public and private, to explore books and treasures from Jewish history. Hi there. Okay. Holy smokes, okay. It's very cozy. Super cozy. Is there an order here? Is there is there a method to the madness? Definitely an organized chaos. Alphabetized? Every, everything yeah. is cataloged. <laughs> it's a pretty straightforward system. I just mark down where it is and you pray that nobody moves it. Generally it works. Yes. How long have you had this store? Here almost 15 years now. 15 years. Yeah. It doesn't take long to fill it up clearly. It's three floors of similar nature and a little bit more. Why did you start collecting and selling rare books or books it's not i mean it's not all rare correct i, I wasn't really planning on this i, I got what married was plan a what you i think? got married Accounting? i had a lot of books i i, I wasn't <laughs> yeah i wasn't thinking that far ahead i was young i was 20. a friend offered me uh, his grandfather's library he knew i knew some books i bought it i made some money off it and one library led to another uh, before you know it, you're 10,000 books in, 20,000 books in, and there really is no retirement plan. Like, what do you do with your books? How do you gradually close it? So you just stick around. And before I think you know that's it, why so many people visit, that just in case they, they want to be written into the Arusha. It's very, yeah. very likely. It's, <laughs> How many uh, books do you have in total? Right now, it's about 500,000. Half a million. And I, uh, despite what it seems like, I am very selective at this point. If something, <laughs> if something comes in, I, I have a, I definitely only, have a customer in mind. Only, <laughs> I, uh, you'll be surprised. I mean, I don't take any of the really basics anymore. I, right? like every house, I do two or three house calls a night. Everyone's gonna have a Rambam, Shulchan Aruch, a Mishnah Bura, you know, Gemaras from We're the good. school. We're good. We have one. So I'm, I'm good with that, and I try to discourage uh, taking these things because then I end up just dealing with somebody coming with a school list. When you say a house call, that. just explain, what do so you mean somebody by Somebody passes away, somebody's moving. Uh, it used to be people in Brooklyn stayed in the house until they passed away. And then I would get a call. Lately, it's been a lot of people retiring and then mm -hmm. moving to Lakewood or Five Towns or Florida. Or so. Or so that sort of thing. But, and they but, say, I and got all these books. too, with synagogues closing down. You know, we, we, you can live in, in Flatbush or Lakewood and think that Jews just are always here and always going to be here. But Jews are very nomadic. And there are places where there, there were shuls in every corner where there's nobody left now. And something has to happen to those uh, synagogues, to their books, to their Sifra Torah, etc. So I, I they get a lot you. of calls and like you, that. And when you buy, you're not buying individual books. You usually I'm buy just, the whole library. Correct. It will be a collection. One shot. Yeah. Okay. Mostly because it's time consuming to have individual uh, negotiations so it's, gotcha. uh, it, and thankfully I have way more book offers than I can handle so if it gets complicated I generally leave it for somebody else this is no it feels like you're standing on, on yeah, like a, there a is, thousand a thousand libraries it's not one so library. that Jewish books is an interesting thing because we have a long history of printing but the places and people and all these everything everybody involved in all the, the making of these books are long gone and the only thing that is left often are, are these books. So the books tell a story of, of entire peoples, entire communities. There's absolutely nothing left to some of these places, even places within the U.S. I mean, every town in New England had a Jewish community and they had a local synagogue bulletin. Where are these things today? There's no record of it. We don't even know where these synagogues existed. So anytime I get any piece like that, I try to put it together and get it to somewhere that would preserve it. Mm -hmm. So show us, let's, let's... I'll show you something, for example, that you can, you know, that just chanced upon in a house in, in New York. So I, I bought a few thousand books from this uh, collection. The person passed away. He was a customer of mine prior. So he had a, a large pile of sheet music. So this is sheet music, Yiddish theater, uh, Chazanas, uh, sort of thing that was published in New York in the beginning of the 1900s. But when I looked at it, it turned out it had a much deeper history here. 
First of all, this specific one is an interesting one. It's an elegy to the Triangle uh, Shirtwaist uh, Factory fire, fire victims. Sure. There were, of course, uh, plenty of Jewish uh, people. This is like a mournful Jewish song women. to commemorate that loss. But this actual copy and these markings, if you look carefully, you can see what it says here is Ghetto Bichirai Theresienstadt. So these sheet music were actually in the Theresienstadt ghetto. The Theresienstadt ghetto, as most people would know, was a... Uh, sort of a front that the Nazis created a concentration camp that was to show the world that it's not we're taking a, good care of them. Yeah, so they brought the Red they Cross and course. foreign dignitaries, etc. Uh, but these, uh, so we know there are books written. There's a full book written about music in Theresienstadt, a book written about the library there. That there was for a while a full operating library. There was a musical performances, and people came to Theresienstadt thinking they were just relocating. So they brought the music with them. They're their musical instruments and to lure them. them in and give them so the somehow, sense of yeah it was just so an this illusion is the sheet music that so they were using actually there in Theresienstadt that's incredible so it's yeah I mean it's uh, it's pretty amazing that somebody th had the sense to take this after the war it might have been I don't know how it survived the person who this uh, came from is gone I can't ask him but he was born in the B camp so it's possible somebody in the family I don't just wow. took it or you know a U.S. soldier maybe took it. But some things just ended up in the U.S. and uh, made their way to private homes and the key is just to find it in time. <laughs>